Well, thanks again for uh, for joining us. My name is Robert Vale, Vice President of Sales here at Genia. Today's uh, webinar topic is staying secure, access control, uh, best practices. So, uh, so today we're going to be walking through a number of items. Uh, joining me is my co-host, uh, Mike Maxeni. Mike is our uh, Director of Access Control Operations, also the co-founder of our access control business that we uh, we acquired uh, from Mike and his other co-founder in uh, 2019. So, uh, been a good two years now. It's been rebranded as Genia, so love having Mike on the team. Uh, he's going to give some really great insight today. So, uh, so can, what are we? What's, what's our plan for the day? So, we're going to go over kind of the agenda is like why. Uh, why should you be assessing the current access control, your current access control system? Um, if it's been a while since you've taken a look at it or trying to figure out your current environment, we really want to understand the why. Why is it necessary to look at that? We're going to talk through some best practices, um, some practices that put you at risk, and some things you can do to help mitigate that risk. Uh, so it's really important to understand, you know, what, what, what's out there uh, and what's, uh, what could be problematic for you and for your organization. Uh, we'll talk about how to minimize risk. And of course, um, because I'm a salesperson, I can't help myself. Uh, we're going to talk about Jania and how we can help you streamline your communications, uh, everything that you do physical security related. So, uh, so with that, let's keep on rolling here. So for those of you not familiar with Jania, we are a uh, company based here in Southern California out of Irvine. We have uh, an office in Atlanta, office in Michigan, and a development office out of India. Um, give you an idea of some of the companies who we work with. We've got over 1,800 sites across 20 different countries, and actually it's 23 countries uh, now, so we need to update that. Uh, give you an idea of some of the wonderful companies who we work with, both on the commercial real estate side and the enterprise side. So, um, so yeah, really, you know, you know a, a blue chip customer base who we we love to uh, to talk to and refer our customers to as well. For those of you not so familiar, just kind of some unique things about our business. Um, we have a 98% retention rate, um, and the reason for this is we have a white glove, white glove approach when it comes to service. So it's uh, it's really important for us to provide service to our direct customers and their end users. So when we go to a commercial real estate office building, uh, we're taking care of the tenants and all the employees as well. Uh, when we roll out to an organization globally, we want to have trusted support, 24-7 support to all the end users, no matter what time zone you're in. Uh, and so that's that's really key to uh, to our organization. Besides our great products, uh, it's really the people and how we manage uh, and and service our customers. So, and that's led us to have a 75 net promoter score, which is uh, something we are very very proud of, uh, and and take uh, take very seriously in terms of how we operate the the business. Uh, for those who are not familiar with all of our solutions, so uh, we have a some solutions uh, very specific to the commercial real estate industry. So that's our overtime HVAC product. Uh, basically, if you're a tenant in a large office building, uh, we give you the ability to go into the building, utilize a smartphone app to request overtime HVAC, turns on all the equipment, turns it off, and then at the end of the month, does all the back-end billing all the way through accounting integration. So property managers, building engineers, they really, really love that service. Uh, we have a secondary product that we launched about six years ago called Submeter Billing. So in buildings where you have um, submeters for supplemental AC units, uh, additional water, uh, where somebody's walking around manually and reading those meters on a once a month basis, uh, we can really automate that process via a smartphone app or via a direct connection to those smart meters. Uh, we handle all the reading of those meters, and then we generate all the tenant invoice statements incorporating any taxes, uh, local uh, local rules, as well as you know, obviously utility fees, generate those invoice statements and provide it back to, uh, to the property management team to bill back their tenants. And of course, we have our cloud-based access control solution, which is what we're going to spend the most majority of our time on today. So, uh, so three products, um, but it's been you know, been a wonderful experience here at Genia. So let's talk about why you should be accessing your uh, your access control, uh, assessing your access control system. So uh, currently, if you've got an on-premise system, uh, there's a slew of things that we see that are that can be challenging for our customer base. So one is, you know, if you've got a system that's in a closet in a basement, it requires that somebody be on site to make changes. Now, as we can see here, both Mike and I are working from home, uh, so that can be a challenge if I need to make any changes to a system, especially for you know our customers who've got you know offices globally. How do you physically manage those sites when you can't be in in the building uh, to make those changes? We also see there's not great processes for uh, removing credentials upon termination of employees. Now, it's fine when you have just one single system in one office, but once you have 50 offices and you have users who've been added to those access control systems across 50 offices and somebody terms, how, what is the process for removing that? And not, people don't have a great process for this. Uh, so maybe you're doing quarterly audits, but oftentimes there's users in that system who've been there for years who no longer work, work with that organization. 
We also see a lot of challenges getting connected to other solutions. So whether it be um, cloud-based video management systems uh, like our, our great partners over at Meraki or Tyco or Milestone, uh, directory services like uh, Azure AD or Okta or you know, our Active Directory, um, or even you know any ter common communication tools like Slack or Teams can be very challenging because they're all cloud-based solutions. And most of your on-prem systems don't have out-of-the-box APIs to be able to connect with those. Um, and of course, you know, the other big thing is the hardware and software is not consistent across the entire enterprise. So, you know, if you acquired a business, um, you inherit whatever they have on site. So if you've got one system that is installed at one point in time by one integrator, you may have another office that's installed at a different time, a different system by a different integrator, and you're trying to manage these different systems. Uh, it can be very, very challenging because you, you don't really know what's there. Uh, and then, of course, when we get to mobile, trying to roll out mobile can be a challenge because you know, most systems aren't really built to support mobile. So, so these are a lot of the challenges that we see. Um, now, kind of shifting gears, like, you know, so being on-prem poses just those set of challenges. But now we had to talk about some other risk uh, that we've seen in the marketplace. So this is where we're going to bring in Mike, and uh, he's going to do a little bit of storytelling, talk about some of the things that he's seen in the market as we've rolled out the product over the years, uh, and some of the solutions that, um, that that we've come up with or our customers have come up with that we really think could be advantageous to this audience. So, so Mike, let's talk about uh, shared or lost key cards. So this is, a, this is one that, you know, you know, we've talked about it before. We have a blog post about how easy it is to duplicate, you know, cards. But, you know, why is this a problem when you just, when, you know, with, with key cards? Yeah, so one of my, <laughs> one of my favorite stories to tell about this one is, um, so when we were just starting the business, uh, we were working at a, a small, co not small, actually, it's a pretty large co-working space in Atlanta. Uh, for any, anyone from Atlanta, you'll know Atlanta Tech Village. Uh, and so as recent college graduates with no VC funding, we were broke. <laughs> and we, so we got one hot desk membership at this co-working space, um, but there was three of us. So in, in order to deal with the mismatch of timing for when we were showing up for different you know, times of the day for work, we just copied the key card three times. And uh, <laughs> so we did that by buying a little, uh, $25 reader writer on eBay that you can still buy today. Um, so physical cards have a number of inherent risks, right? You, you don't have to be as um, sophisticated as I'll, I'll call it uh, and buy a reader writer to copy key cards, but you can, I can just share a key card, right? We, we could have just shared the card around and whoever was going to be there first the next day could have shown up and let us in. Um, so there's a number of inherent problems with that, like you know, sharing cards, duplicating them, um, or even hacking them. So, uh, you know, some of the the best ways to mitigate those risks, uh, and one of our early sort of insights uh, that led us to creating secure, ultimately Genie access control, uh, was you know why don't we just use a phone instead of our physical card? Because the phone allows you to do a number of other things, right? So you can have two-factor authentication um, where you have to unlock the phone with your biometrics, whether it's face ID, touch ID, a passcode, uh, in order to actually use the credential on the phone. Um, also, you can do things like temporary temporary access. So um, creating batch types that have a default uh, expiration time frame, or what we call a use it or lose it function. So if the card isn't used for five, 10, you know, 30 days, right? Then the card will delete from the system. Um, Cause that's usually an indicator that it's been lost uh, or it does not need to be active anymore for whatever reason. So those are some of the easy ways that you can, you can mitigate the physical card risk. Uh, not to mention it's just way more convenient to use mobile. No, absolutely makes sense. And we hear a lot of stories where people are complaining because you know, you're just managing people losing their cards all the time, you know, let alone the sharing, but you know, just the, the losing cards and losing a credential and having to reissue that. And if you've got a manual process, it can be very time consuming for a lot of customers. So uh, thanks, Mike. That, uh, the, the story always makes me laugh about how you initially started and here we are in physical security, uh, deterring <laughs> people from doing what you did. <laughs> um, uh, let's, let's switch now to, to, to visitors, right? So when you've got um, you know, visitors coming on site, you know, some of the risk, right? Um, well, two, 
people like me were at risk. So when I used to go and travel all the time, I used to walk around any place I wanted within a building. So once you, once you dress nice and you're in a suit, uh, you can get, get to the front desk and you can kind of just wander around. And uh, not that I was, you know, nefarious or anything, but you see that happen all the time where people are just wandering through. So, so like, you know, what should be a good, you know, it's a, besides people like me, but like when we look at visitors, how do we handle that? How pe- should our customers handle that? Yeah, so um, I think a couple of good examples here when we used to, you know, back before the, the whole pandemic shamazzle, uh, we, when we used to go travel around and visit customers, uh, it was very common for us to be stuck in waiting you know, in the lobby of a building or an office, right? Or sometimes both, right? You, you wait in the lobby and then you get up to the, the floor and then you're waiting again and no one knows who you are except for the person that you're there to visit. Um, so the, the, one of the common ways or easiest ways that you can do, uh, deploy to fix this problem is to have a pre-registration system. So with Judea visitor management and a number of other visitor management tools, right? You have the ability to pre-register guests and then issue them some sort of credential before they ever arrive at the lobby. That solves two problems, right? One is the endless lines of people waiting at your reception desk or your security desk if you're a building operator. And two is that there's at least a, uh, uh, at least the person checking you in has a list of people who are authorized to be there. So if I show up, I show them my credential or I show them my QR code, they know that, uh, and they can cross-reference that against a, a list of pre-registered guests. So you know, having people do the check-in process before they show up is critical. And then having you know, a, basically a double opt-in uh, system where both sides of the check-in process know uh, who's, who they're expecting uh, is, is really important. You know, and then obviously with, uh, with, the, with the pandemic, right, health concerns become a problem, right? So, um, you know, if you're asking people health questions, like, hey, are you sick? <laughs> Have you been tested in the last five days? You want them to answer those questions when they're not standing in five feet in front of you. Um, <laughs> you want them to add, answer those questions, go through some sort of check-in process way before they're ever showing up on site. Um, so having that pre-registration flow really allows you to take care of the health concerns the, and the process efficiency and the security uh, risks associated with just welcoming guests into the facility. So, um, yeah, and then also, you know, ban lists, right? Trying to ban, you know, creepy salespeople from walking around <laughs> and, you know, entering spaces where they shouldn't go. Yeah, so this is, you know, think about it this way, right? We, a lot of our customers have five, 10, 100,000 employees uh, or, or users of their system. It is impossible to know every single permutation of guests that have been invited that shouldn't be you know, allowed on site anymore. So um, with band lists, like what we have in our, in our visitor management system, uh, both your employees, your tenants, uh, your operators of your security system can register users and then you can, put them on a ban list and we'll cross-reference versus the actual spelling of the name as well as their email address. So if you're using that pre-registration system, you know, those types of ban lists and watch lists can greatly eliminate, you know, bad actors or uh, people who have violated p- policies in the past from coming back uh, to your facility. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, no, that's uh, super helpful. You know, it's, it's, it's not just about getting employees on and, you know, tenants, but, you know, you got to plan for the visitors and how do you address that? So I think this is really great. So thanks, Mike. Um, let's look at number three, uh, theft. So obviously, oh, yeah. you know, theft can occur anywhere, <laughs> right? Um, so let's, uh, let's talk about theft and how, how, what you should be doing to help mitigate some of that. Well, since we're, since we're doing story time, I'll tell my favorite story here as well. Um, you know, when you, when you work in access control for seven years, right, you, you start to collect stories from your customers. Uh, and this one really stuck out. So uh, at our old headquarters in Atlanta, that we, one of our customers had a, had a building across the street from us and they had about 500 people working there. Well, one day they had a hot, you know, they had a, a, a termination that was not exactly mutual. Uh, the, you know, the, the, the former employee was not happy to be let go. Um, and so what happens when you have 500 people is that, and especially in a termination type situation, you're not going to announce that to the whole you know, company. So, and that's a familiar face. And in this instance, the person left and then came back at lunch when everyone, you know, kind of filters outside, grabs some lunch, um, and they're coming back in. Well, he just 
walked right back in with all the rest of the employees. Um, and no one knew uh, that he had been terminated and also his badge hadn't been deactivated yet because they weren't using a, an, an integration to their HR system. Um, and so the person just badged right in no one knew any, any any better. He stole the manager's keys that fired him and stole the manager's car <laughs> and then <laughs> crashed it into the side of their, their parking deck. Um, so yeah, like, you know, long story short, what, what this taught us is a few things, right? One is that uh, you need to have your access control system integrated to your HR system of record. Um, because in the event of termination, like the most critical thing you can do is deactivate their credentials uh, immediately. And with our Oct integration or Google Workspace or Azure AD, right? You can, if you have a scheduled term, it'll actually flow through the scheme integration once the term happens and you don't have to worry about their credentials being active anymore. Um, so that's the benefit of the cloud, right? That's the benefit of our API integrations. And we really encourage customers to use them because it's A, free. Uh, you don't have to pay us any extra for it. And two, it can really um, help mitigate one of the most serious risks for any organization, which is the internal risk of those uh, current or former employees. Um, so that's that's really important. Um, you know, also the, the having the use it or lose it function is is super important but more importantly like what when we see a, a lot of customers that we're taking from old access control systems like a you know linnell or what have you when and they're coming to jania you know they've got 10 15 years of buildup of like keys that are you know should not be active anymore or just this crazy convoluted system of access permissions so what what the upgrade process really allows for customers to do is to stop and then clean out all of that stuff. It's like moving house, right? Like I just, I just moved the house and I threw away, you know, probably 40% of the stuff that was in my, uh, my old apartment because I just didn't, I didn't even know I had it anymore. It's the same thing with access control systems, right? If you're, if you're moving systems, it's a great opportunity to clean out all the stuff you don't use that's actually causing you risk that you're not even thinking about. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Thanks, Mike. That's a that story makes me laugh every time. Like, I can I can imagine if we pulled all our customers and say, "Tell us the craziest story you've ever had about like something from, you know, somebody terming and like something after that." Like, we'd get a slew of stories, which some of it could have been solved by just deactivating the card. Um, you know, and you know, sometimes you can't get around it, but you know, there's a lot that you can do just by being more secure with your with your system and having uh, having data updated immediately. So. Um, health risk. So obviously this is very topical. Um, you know, everybody is uh, well. We're still at, we're still working at home, uh, but very topical. You know, how do we how do we can we talk about health? What are the risks? And you know, what's some of our solutions mm -hmm. there? Yeah, well, you and I are still working from home, but we do have people back in the That's office, true. and and so you know, there's a couple of things that are enabled for our customers through our product, but also that we leverage internally. So uh, we built a, a, a group of features called Safe Workplace into our product. Uh, and it's all built around that, that concept of pre-registration, but instead of just for guests, we're, we're turning that internally and using it for employees, right? So if I, you know, when I come back, you know, to the office during Thanksgiving, uh, I will, I will have to go through a check-in process, answer some basic questions about my health status. Um, and then once I answer those questions, then my key card is activated for the day. So just like you have guest pre-registration, you now have employee pre-registration. This has become very popular, obviously, in the last uh, 18 to 20 months. Um, and you can, you can use this internally with Safe Workplace, the pre-registration process. We also have integrations with third-party systems that enable this, like Envoy. Um, so you know, whether you're using Envoy or Jania uh, Safe Workplace, you have that pre-registration process that actually, you know, the key card for your employees won't turn on until they answer those questions. Um, beyond that, we have capacity restrictions too. So uh, you can just turn on a capacity uh, uh, cap in our system. And then once those registrations and people badging in for the day reaches a certain number, so in our case, 50, like once 50 people are in the office, no more for the day. Um, and, and that also can include guests. If you want that cap to be 50 
people, not just employees. So 50 like employees and guests, you can expand that cap, uh, that cap to, to include both in our system. So um, having the ability to, to cap people, check them you know, ahead of time before they show up on site, and then last but not least is, you know, if, if first, you know, some unfortunate occurrence happens where someone was to test positive before, you know, while they were on site, you can do contact tracing with our system. So uh, using our contact tracing feature, you can just type in the person's name, the day that they were on site, and it, it'll give you a list of every single person that was on site that day with that person so that you can have a call sheet and say, hey, like, be advised, you know, this person or you are exposed potentially to uh, an illness and uh, you know, don't come back you know, for a couple of days, make sure you're healthy. And then um, uh, it's it just a lot. These are the types of things you can enable with the cloud-based system, right? Because uh, as where I'm located, I can still do that for our team in Irvine or, or Atlanta or, or Detroit. So um, yeah, those are some of the things that our product helps us alleviate. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it's incredibly helpful. I mean, I know we use it obviously for our office and our, you know, our head of HR, Christine, put together all the questionnaire and there, and she keeps it up to date because there's, you know, the, the rules are changing as well. And that's another part of this is having a solution that you can keep up with the times and adjust accordingly. So, uh, which is incredibly helpful for us. Uh, thanks, Mike. All right, last one, probably got a number of things that you've seen here. This is about outdated systems, right? You've got premise on-premise systems that have been in a closet for God knows how long, uh, where there's wires everywhere and you know nobody knows the password or the password's been shared. Uh, you know, what what have you seen out there? Yeah, so uh, we a couple examples here. You know, we typically see, especially in the commercial real estate world, uh, systems that are way beyond their operating life. Um, and so a couple of things happened from that. One is we're just in the middle of a project in, for a building in Boston uh, last week. And the project got delayed three weeks because their Linnell server crashed. Um, and so we couldn't pull the, the, the users from the system to migrate them to Genia. Um, and so anytime you're, you're having to maintain a physical server and patch it and upgrade it, let's face it, right? That's never anyone's primary job. And so it's gonna, it's gonna get forgotten. It's gonna get delayed. It's not gonna get done at all sometimes. Uh, and so you're, you're gonna run into those types of issues where you just have a system completely fail on you. Um, so that was one you know, good example. Thankfully, right, we were able to extract the SQL database uh, from the remnants of what was there and, and put together the new system, uh, get them migrated to Genia. Um, it, you know, despite their old server crashing, but um, yeah, for three weeks, they couldn't add any new badges. So uh, it's not great if you're a commercial office building and the only time people complain is if they can't get into the turnstiles. <laughs> so that's never good. Uh, another good example here is, you know, when, when Jania bought my company, right? We, the first order of business was, okay, we're upgrading the, the headquarter building to our new access control system. And so we went in there and, well, there was 25,000 active key cards for a 300,000 square foot building that holds on max 1,200 people. Um, and so you can imagine, right, with 25,000 active key cards, you might as well just leave the doors open, leave the elevators unlocked. Like it just doesn't matter at that point because 20, there's that's so many key cards that it, anyone could just pick one up and, and use it. So uh, database hygiene with outdated systems is is always a problem um and it's not just because that people are lazy right it's just because the technology makes their job nine ten fifteen steps that can only be per performed on on premises so um it's just it's it's such a technological barrier that makes their job really hard and thus causes security problems um the other problem is right failing equipment so especially if you have access control running your elevators or uh, running you know access to critical spaces if you have really old outdated equipment you're going to run into access control issues left right and center and it'll, you'll be running around chasing your tail trying to figure out what's going on until ultimately it comes back to your 20 year old you know scp series one mercury panel that, that failed because it's 15 years out of life a service so <laughs> uh I, we just did a, a, a huge fortune 50 company that had those those old old panels all over the place and um and yeah thankfully 
we were able to catch it and, and upgrade it during the migration process. But you know, that's a Fortune 50 company. Um, so look, if, if you have a really old system, you're probably going to run into these issues. And uh, it's important to just at least keep your hardware updated every 10 years. Awesome. Very, uh, very helpful. Um, no, these are all, you know, super great. Obviously, this all leads into, you know, our product and why we think our product really can help fit a lot of these needs. But, you know, it's always fun to understand the risk. And, you know, when people are evaluating their current systems, it's like, okay, should I make a move? When should I make a change? Like, these are very practical risks that somebody should review and make a decision, a business decision uh, to move away. And uh, luckily, you know, our, our product and the way that we offer it, it makes a really easy transition over. So. Uh, which is, you know, how do we, how can we help? So, um, so obviously we've got a, you know, we think we have a best in class, uh, cloud-based access control solution. It's, uh, built on non-proprietary hardware. So we're both our Mercury and HID partners. So we can leverage a lot of your Mercury boards that you already have in place. So if you've got an existing Linnell system, uh, where the server crashed, we can leverage the, uh, the existing controllers in place and bring in a better software solution. Same thing for open options, RS2, uh, Genetech. There's a number of solutions out there. Um, and, you know, we took what is great in access control and, you know, built it in the cloud and improved upon it a lot of things. So one is uh, user provisioning. We wanted to make it really easy to add and remove, in, you know, users from the system and add them to multiple locations with a click of a button. Uh, so it's really simple to add somebody and physically manage your, your, all your facilities uh, with, with one spot. We also want to make really big key thing is having one key card for your, all your locations. So whether you're using a physical card or mobile, that credential can work across your entire enterprise. Uh, so when you, once you streamline all these processes and everything, it makes it really simple to do that. Um, we also love integrations. So we want to be able to integrate with video uh, solutions like uh, like Meraki, like Tyco, like Milestone, like Rhombus, uh, and have those the, the integration between access and video and have that streamed within the access control product, which is very, very powerful for the customers. Uh, Mike already talked about you know visitor management and bringing visitors on site safely and having the ability to have um, visitors come on site, have that interact with the access control system. So if somebody's using our visitor management solution, I can invite somebody, go through a pre-registration process, and then I can offer a QR code to give them a temporary credential so they can get in through a turnstile and elevator and open a door. And then of course, service and support. We already talked about in the very beginning how how key that is to Genia's business is providing end user support 24 seven. So within our product, there's live chat 24 seven to anybody who needs help. So whether it's um, how do you turn on an access group or I just can't get in the door, there's something physically wrong. You know, we're the first line of defense to come to us. We're gonna triage anything software related. If we determine something is downstream uh, wrong, so a controller's offline, a reader's broken, something like that happens, we'll then reach out to one of our integrator partners to come on site and to fix it. Um, but we'll be able to give them information about that so that the time spent is useful. And then we're gonna be there to help them to uh, resolve the issue as well and make sure that the software and hardware are communicating appropriately. Um, and of course, the ability to remotely manage physical security. So if you're working at home and you need to open a door from somebody, can you do that from your phone? Can you see all the activity that's happening from anywhere in the world? Uh, so that's, you know, some of the beauties of, of our platform. Um, we also want to be able to support all forms of credentials. So when we come into a site, and especially when you look at commercial real estate, uh, you've got a building that may have 50 tenants, 50 different cards, clickers, fobs. We want to support all those cards and all those formats. And then, of course, roll out mobile and give the ability to offer mobile to your employees or to tenants, anything like that as well. Um, but we want to have a very flexible system to, to support all that. And speaking of mobile, you know, what we wanted to do is make the mobile experience really easy and, uh, and beneficial to the, to, to the end users. So uh, from provisioning aspect, we wanted to make it really simple to provision a credential right from our platform or from our phone. So no longer do I have to go to a separate HID or Rego database and manage two different systems. I can do it right from the Genia platform. Uh, we don't charge per key. Everything is inclusive as part of our monthly subscription. So we want to have that really easy to adopt mobile. Uh, by mobile is much more secure. Uh, so like Mike already talked about it with mobile, I can do multi-factor authentication. I require that somebody can face ID before they can actually use the phone. So the phone is really incredible uh, way uh, to, to, to secure the facility and secure your credentials as well. Um, 
In addition to that, kind of we have the, the future set of, of the additional products is our safety and wellness features. So we talked about it earlier is, you know, you have the ability before anybody comes on site to go through a series of questionnaires to make sure uh, we're obeying whatever protocols you have for your either your organization or for the place where you're physically located. So uh, as our, we call it safe workplace. So before I come on site every single day, my credential is deactivated. If I want to come through, I go a series of COVID-related questions, and then my um, then my credential can actually be turned back on. It also allows for capacity planning and contact tracing too. So uh, it's a really incredible way to keep people safe and, and come on site as, as appropriate. And then of course our visitors, bringing the visitors on site, really easy to use my phone, advise a visitor on site, go through that pre-registration process, and I can issue a QR code to allow them to come on site. So. Uh, so with that, we still got some time because we went through this pretty quick. Uh, Mike, I think it'd be great if uh, maybe you could just do a high-level demo. Uh, just jump into the product. For those of people, it's been a while that maybe they've seen the product, jump in and take a look. Now, let me just stop sharing and I'll switch. You've got the power now, sir. Cool. All right. Um, so I'll take us through, uh, like you said, high-level uh, view of our product from both the web app and the mobile app. Uh, before I dive in, it's it's important to note that the you know the basic building block of the system is the location dashboard, um, and then we if you have multiple sites with us, uh, we syndicate those together into this GSOC Lite uh, web application that you see here, uh, which is called our global dashboard. So uh, and and then in the mobile app, we'll look at some of the administrative functions as well that are available there and I'll switch interchangeably between them. So one of the things that, you know, any multi-site customer, they have, you know, 10, 15 offices, right? You wanna be able to quickly see high level data and alarms across all of your sites in one easy to use location. So right here in the global dashboard, you're gonna see a, your, an overview of your a daily attendance across all of your offices. You'll be able to see the harbor status as well uh, across those offices. And it looks like we got uh, an issue here in New York that we got to go take a look at. Um, beyond that, right, alarm management. So making sure that you can see any critical events and then also view video of them. So if you're using Exact Vision or Milestone or any of the BMS systems that we integrate with, you can pull in those camera feeds right into your alarm management system here in the global dashboard. So uh, if we see someone badging into a door they don't have access to, um, like this one, Zoe, we can just pull up a view of that uh, event. So it'll bookmark a video in your VMS and pull it back. Now this is a demo instance, so it's not gonna give you that uh, exact view, but I wanted to show you that we, we do support RTSPS streaming into the Genia dashboard from your uh, video management system. Uh, once you've reviewed the video, you say, all right, you know, this uh, looked like it was an accident. Um, all good. So you can acknowledge the alarm, have all the notes right here as well. Um, and then of course, because it's cloud-based, you could have all of your security operators logging into the same place, wherever they are. They don't need to be sitting in the same room together, um, like I've seen a lot of our customers do, but you can manage this from anywhere. Uh, the other thing you can do here is obviously select which alarms you're going to receive here and then rank them uh, by severity. So all that's customizable right here in the dashboard. Uh, the other thing that we allow you to do is have global user management. So even with newer sort of cloud-based systems, right, that are uh, not really cloud-based, but that's a nuance we don't have to dive into today, um, you still have to add users individually by location. So with us, we allow you to um, completely automate that through Okta or Azure, Direct, Azure AD, but you can also do that manually through the, pro, uh, through the, uh, the dashboard here. So uh, we'll just create a test user here. And then I'll select the locations that I wanna add them to. So let's say this person needs access to New York and LA. I'll select the access groups in each site that they need access to. And then we'll go ahead and hit save. So now we've got our test user in here. We've given them access to three different offices. And now by virtue of, of this sort of access profile, 
uh, we then give them a credential that will work across all those locations automatically. So uh, for those of you that have experienced HID mobile, um, had to have the HID Arigo portal and then add, you know, add the key there, copy and paste it into the access control system. With Genia, you have none of that. It's all fully integrated into our platform. We've integrated all the backend APIs for user provisioning. And on the front end, you get this Genia application right here on the right-hand side of your screen. So uh, sometimes if we don't tell the customer that it's HID on the backend, they, they would have no idea um, what that is. But for those of you that have experience with that, uh, this will be a, a, a sort of a game-changing level of experience uh, for you. So the other thing here is that you have badge types where so contractor badges have an automatic expiration threshold applied to them. And then they'll, you know, could have the, that use it or lose it feature that we talked about during the, uh, uh, during the presentation earlier. But now see brand new HID mobile key ready for that user. And if they're using, if you're using SSO for your organization, SAML 2.0, um, then all they have to do is just log in with their SAML credentials and the key will be waiting for them in the app. It's so much easier than the traditional HID mobile experience. Um, so that's the global dashboard. I mean, we have also badge printing and design templates right here. So if you're, if you're using physical cards, you can do all your badge printing and design your templates right here in our dashboard. Um, so that's the global dashboard. Let's jump into a location specific dashboard. So because of the architecture of our system where you have site by site dashboards, you can give administrators only a single site level of control, or you can give them that global, that global dashboard access as well. So it allows you to delegate work within the system uh, without exposing them to features or locations they don't have rights to access. Um, <laughs> so a couple of things I wanna focus on here is, is one, if you come down to the activity logs, you'll be able to see all those events right here and you'll have your link to video as well. So that's a really nice uh, uh, part of our VMS integration feature set. But beyond that, you have this camera wall feature. So um, as a security operator, I can create my own custom view of the site that I am, am in charge of, uh, see the camera wall and do all of our access control from the same web application, rather than having to switch between your VMS and your access control system. Um, if I want, I can pull up a live view of that. I could scroll back through the, through the VMS right here. So, um, all that's available right here in the web application. The other thing that you're, you're going to have is your integrations. So a uh, ton of integrations that are available for our customers out of the box with no additional charge, uh, like Okta, Azure AD, Google Workspace for user provisioning, SAML single sign-on. Uh, you can get your notifications from your system in Slack or Teams. So rather than having to like monitor the logs in Genia, uh, you can just get a notification in Slack with a video link right there. Um, so sort of our ethos here is, is the best interface is no interface, uh, especially with access control, right? Like we, we understand that you have a lot more important things to do than monitor your access control system. So we wanted to do everything we can through you know, provisioning automation and notification routing outside of the platform to limit the amount of time you have to spend in Genia. Um, the other thing here is your camera integration. So again, these are available out of the box, no additional charge, Cisco Meraki, Tyco, Eagle Eye, Milestone, Exact Vision. Uh, and there's a couple more coming. Uh, Rhombus will be uh, coming shortly. That's, uh, it's actually available through their system, but we're enabling the two-way uh, integration in our platform here. Um, you can do email routing through your own corporate email servers. You can build your own integrations via webhooks and, and API right here. Uh, we've got a couple of visitor management system integrations here as well. Um, so uh, yeah, this is our integrations tab. Now in the mobile app, right, you're gonna have all the same administrative features as well. So not only is it your, your digital key, uh, but also this is how I can reserve my spot in the office. So if I want to come in tomorrow, I can just select that. I can answer the questions that our HR requires. All right, I'm um, all good there. And now I've answered the questions, I'm approved for access tomorrow. Um, so you have your safe workplace, you have your mobile key, but you also have all of your administrative actions as well. So if I need to add a new employee, I can just add them here by clicking the plus button. Uh, if I want to give someone a new mobile key, I just go to their profile, hit add card and select digital key, and then it'll send them a mobile key. So if I'm not on site, I don't have my laptop, 
doesn't matter. I can still get someone in with a credential quickly and easily. The other thing that's really nice about this is you can do your remote door controls as well. So if I'm if it's a Saturday and uh, someone's on site that needs access, no one's there to let them in. All I have to do is just slide that uh, lock button over, and it'll unlock the door for them and let them right back in, uh, and it'll just give you a confirmation there. The other great thing here is that you can switch between your sites and you have access to. So if I'm a multi-site admin, I can just quickly select the other site. It'll pull up all the users and the keys and the administrative actions there for that site. Uh, so that's the multi-site administration tool. And then last but not least is visitor management. So uh, with integrated VM, you can quickly invite new guests right here just by selecting someone from your, your previously invited guest list select the guest type that they are, hit save, and that, that'll govern the check-in flow that they go through, uh, and then hit create. And so now we've got a new guest invite right there in a matter of three clicks. So uh, that's Genia VM and Safe Workplace on mobile. So last but not least, let's talk about that in the web app, and then um, we'll talk about support as well, since that's really important. So for, for visitor management, right, the administration of the system happens right here in the web application. You can see your visitor, uh, your current active visitors. I can check them in if I'm the you know, front desk uh, manager and someone's arrived, I can just check them in like that. I see all of our guest logs here. So uh, we'll have a running list instead of a paper log book, right, that never gets checked or used. Uh, you have a digital record of all that. It's quickly and easily searchable right here. Um, you can design multiple check-in flows depending on the type of visitor you have. So for contractors, right, we just have uh, a couple simple questions here. We can create advanced questions with downstream logic right here. So I can create a question with multiple answers and add a smart rule. So if I say like answer is no or yes, then if they say no, uh, then it will deny access for them. So you can create all those types of uh, advanced logic uh, based questions here. Then you have photo capture, document signing, um, badge printing as well. So if you want to you know, print someone a badge when they get on site, you can just enable that. Uh, and then last but not least is you can select whether or not you're going to use the QR code for access or not. If you don't have QR code readers, then you can just turn that off and you just have your standard pre-registration check-in flow. So all of that is customizable here in the dashboard. And it's a one-stop shop, right? You don't have to have a separate tool to manage visitor management and access control. It's all right here in the same, uh, same dashboard. Last but not least is Safe Workplace, right? So that's the check-in questionnaire that I went through here on mobile. Uh, we can create a questionnaire. We can set a capacity limit. So if I want to reduce that down to 50 people, uh, just hit save and now no more than 50 people can come on site. Uh, you can also run that contact tracing as well. So if I want to run a contact tracing report, I just select the time period in question. So we'll say last Wednesday and Thursday, we'll select our person and then hit save. And it's going to run a report of anyone who was on site at the same time. Now, thankfully, it doesn't look like Adrian was on site, so there's no one to cross check against. Um, but that's how the contact tracing feature works. And it's right here in our, in our uh, web app. Okay, so that was probably the fastest demo I've ever done uh, of that many features. <laughs> so uh, with that said, I just wanna show off uh, how important support is for Virginia. So uh, from day one with, uh, with our access control product, we've always had the ability for you to live chat 24 seven with our team. So you have live chat support right here in the web app. You have phone and email contact as well. Uh, with, a, with a dedicated team working around the clock. Um, so when, when we have customers in 23 different countries, um, it's important for to have a 24-7 team uh, monitoring those channels. And uh, so if you're in Australia or India or all over the EU where we have customers, um, you'll always have the same level of support right here through our team. So uh, Rob, over to you. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. So we just had a question. Uh, how do you decrease capacity if someone leaves. So I think that's probably related to during the day. So say we're at capacity of 50, mm -hmm. um, yeah. somebody leaves and now we have an open spot of 49. Yeah, so there's two ways. Uh, one is the, the easy way is you have a checkout process. So 
Uh, you could check out of safe workplace uh, if I'm leaving. So that would reduce the, the, you know, that person from the max capacity limit. Uh, the other way is to have badge in badge out system. So if you have badge out readers, then that would, that would update your capacity in real time. Um, same thing with visitor manager, right? If you, uh, if you enforce the checkout when, when guests are leaving, that will take them out of the active onsite count as well. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Um, so I'm going to stop your screen real quick, and I'm going to go back to my screen. Sure. Uh, you know, I want to thank everybody for uh, for joining us today, for taking time. Uh, if there's any questions, feel free to answer them as well. <laughs> for those of you who are interested in just having somebody from our team reach out to anything specific, feel free to scan this QR code. So just like you do in a restaurant restaurant right now. Pull up your phone, put it right up to your computer screen. It'll take you to a, to a form that you can fill out. And uh, somebody from the team will, hold, will go ahead and get back to you and answer any specific questions. Um, and then we've got another question. What is the ballpark as far as cost is concerned? Um, so, so the software side is actually really, really easy to answer. So the way that we price software uh, for our enterprise customers, we start with a base price per location. So it's about $2,500 a year. Uh, and then there's a user price for above and beyond an allotment of users starting at uh, $18 per year per user. Um, on the commercial real estate side, uh, we charge on based on square footage starting at $0.03 cents per square foot per year. Of course, there are discounts um, as we have multiple volume, more users, more locations. So, uh, but that gives you a general sense of where we start. But, um, but yeah, we, we, we priced so that we can scale uh, with our customers. Um, so if you're a small, uh, smaller company and you've got one office, uh, we wanted to make it affordable for you to come in. And then as you scale your organization and grow, we can grow with you. So, um, yeah. so you know, once again, I want to thank everybody for your time. Mike, you know, thank you for the great stories as always uh, and your expertise. So we appreciate that. Uh, once again, for the audience, uh, go ahead and scan the QR code. Um, like I said, we can reach out separately, do one-on-one -on -one demos, or if there's specific questions that you have about your current access control system, if you want us to do a kind of a help with a risk analysis of what you have on site, I'll get Mike on the phone and he'll say, oh, um, what, are you, what are you doing here? You should be changing this because of this, this, and this. Um, you know, it's always a, it's a helpful exercise if you're ever curious of, uh, from, from his perspective on what's going on. So. Um, so I think that's it. Um, so Mike, you know, thank you again. Once again to the audience, appreciate your time. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording. And like I said uh, before, this will be sent out to you via email afterwards. Um, but really appreciate everybody's time and for joining us. So thank you. Thanks everyone.